Hi, good afternoon everybody. So I'm jumping on today for a live because we have a question from one of our patients. So I sent everybody a message yesterday saying if you have any questions, any concerns, anything maybe you need answered with, of course we cannot deal with directly in the clinic. The best thing to do is to send me a WhatsApp on 84389550 and I'd either be able to do one of two things. It's either to answer it directly or I can do like I'm doing now or make a video and this will be shared to all of our patients and to everyone within our community so they can all get the benefit of the same questions which I'm sure some of you may have or may not have even thought to ask yet. So this particular question we're asking now comes from Jeremy and Jeremy is asking more about what's happening because he's been sitting more at home and he's starting to get these pains around his wrist and around his elbow as well. So what I'll do first, I'll explain a bit about why these may happen and then I've got a few movements which we can do today to see if it is something purely happening at the wrist and at the elbow. So one thing that happens is when we are sitting for more time, of course we're starting to change our posture. So if someone is sitting, they're probably not going to be up like this the whole time, they're going to start to curl forward. And when they curl forward, it can start to have an effect on their overall posture, which can start to affect their shoulders, the neck, and these can then potentially start to compress on the nerves here and send information further down. So there are two main ways that we can start to get these pains here or here. It can either be directly in these areas caused by a problem here, such as carpal tunnel, too much time at a desk, too much time maybe using a mouse or a computer, or it may be if there's something happening further up here. One of the ways to tell the difference between the two is that say if, say you're working from home and now your routine has changed, instead of maybe having meetings and you're going around, instead you're spending a lot more time sitting and being sedentary, this may mean that instead you are actually using the computer more, which may directly be a problem at the wrist or at the elbow. However, if on the other side, you may already have quite a sedentary job, you're used to sitting quite a lot, however the seating position is different at home compared to your job, and you're doing the same number of hours, this may mean that it isn't actually something happening directly at the wrist or the elbow themselves because logically your body is used to this, you've already been doing these kind of movements for quite a long time. So instead what may be happening is there may be inclusion of what's happening at the neck and at the shoulder. So as I mentioned there are these two different types and what I'm going to start with today is just to go through if this is something where you already sit for quite a number of hours at work and at home, then this is something where again it may be more linked to this poorer posture in the less ergonomic chairs that most of us have in our homes. Maybe our setups isn't as good when we're at our desks. So instead I'll be explaining first about the neck and the shoulder. One of the easiest ways to really understand about what's happening in the neck and the shoulder is to have a look at one of our other videos. So it's one that I made near the beginning of the circuit breaker where I explain about some stretches for the shoulder and for the neck. I'll put that into the comments below this. However, the simple idea of this is to make sure that we're getting enough of a stretch around this big muscle up here, which is called the upper traps. And that's going to make sure that it's then going to be relieving some of what may be taking the pressure on from the neck and of course traveling down to the shoulder. And the other thing I talk about in that video as well is some other movements to help improve general posture. So this included having something underneath the neck and something else going along the length of the spine as well. But as I mentioned, I'll put the comment the, the video for that in the comments so you can go to that to get that more in depth. So again number one would be to address if this is something purely happening at the shoulder or the neck because those nerves travel all the way down. One way to think of those nerves they travel through the body is they're a little bit like say wires in a building. If say there's a wire in the wall say around here and if I put a hammer through it won't just affect of course where the wire hits, it's going to start to affect any lights, any plug sockets and anything else that it's supposed to be sending information and electricity to. Same thing for the body, the information is going to be starting from the brain and traveling down the arm. So if something is being damaged in the neck or in the shoulder, it can start to affect the elbow, the fingers, the hand or the wrist. So again, number one, we're going to address if it is something in that top part. And I would suggest for everybody, to be honest, who is spending more time at home, whether you're spending more time sitting or just more time in an uncomfortable or less, less optimal posture, then I would recommend doing some stretches for the neck and for the shoulder, at least while chiropractors and other uh, physicians are closed. The next thing I want you to do is if this is something which is purely happening, say at your elbow or the wrist, which may be due to say spending more time at your desk, more time at a computer working, where maybe you usually would have say something more physical, more active, or maybe going to meetings, then there's a few different stretches that you can do for these particular areas. And if these are more sore, this may be an indicator that something is happening here. Again, I will say that if these movements are hurting too much, please stop. These are not supposed to be no pain, no gain. These are supposed to be to help you improve. And if it doesn't really help to relieve things, please give me a message and I'll be happy to talk to you, try and find out if there's anything else maybe we need to do. So the movements we're going to be doing, 
First we'll start with the wrists and then I'll go through some that's going to address the wrist and going through the elbow. So number one is going to be taking your hand, bringing it out here, so I'll bring it myself to the side, elbow nice and straight, not having it with a bend, nice and straight, and then taking the hand and just bringing it back, making sure it's not just say from here in the middle of the hand and your fingers are coming up, going right from the tips of the fingers and bringing them all the way down like this. And you can switch this to between here and here, and you may notice that each of those different stretches is going to start to hit different parts and different muscle groups within there. Most people will find this one generally more difficult than it would be for this one. However, when doing this one, you may start to feel other stretches. And as well as, even though I mentioned this is more for your wrist, really it will start to have an effect on the elbow as well. So again, doing this on both sides, switching between those stretches, and when you find one where to be honest, there's more tension, not particularly a lot of pain, but there's more tension and stress, then you want to hold that stretch for around one minute. Going beyond that may be, to be honest, quite uncomfortable. Going below that won't be very effective. Going for around one minute for all of these stretches today will be very effective. So again, switching between there and there and doing this on both sides and making sure that it's not just on the side where you're feeling pain or symptoms, but you're doing this on both sides, whether there's symptoms or not, to try and prevent these kind of issues going forward, especially if you are now spending more time sitting at a desk and doing computer work. So number one, as I mentioned, it's bringing those fingers back. So the idea of kind of like looking at your nails is an easy way to think of it. And the other way is going down. So from here, bring further down again, keeping the arm nice and straight. We're not bending up here, keeping nice and straight and bringing back. And then again, coming the other way, having them up and coming back here. Generally for most people, this one won't be as uncomfortable, but make sure that you are getting into both areas. Again, elbow nice and straight, bringing them back and then doing this again for around one minute on both sides and playing between those two different movements, rotating in and out to see which one is causing a bit more tension and try to focus more on that. Don't always go for the one that's as easy, generally go for the one that's a little bit harder. That would be an indicator there may be more tension in those muscle groups. Okay, so number one, of course we had those two stretches. Number two is the other stretch and number three is gonna be a movement we do down here. So I'm just gonna change the camera. So from here, again, you don't need to have a mat like I've got here. You can have any kind of surface, having the hands on the floor here. And what you're going to be doing is coming slightly forward. So we're building a bit more of a stretch onto this outside area. And then from here, what you're going to be doing with the elbow is trying to get it to go out and come back in and go out and come back in. And one thing that is a bit better for time and efficiency, let's bring that a little bit across. Yeah. So from there, again coming a bit more forward, so you're getting a bit of stretch and coming through there. And what this is going to be doing is really getting better mobility into that elbow, because the elbow especially, if you are sitting at a desk and you've been sitting at that desk for quite a while and maybe your hand is constantly in this position because you have one hand on a mouse, another hand typing, then it's going to start to put more pressure on that elbow. It's going to start to change some of those angles. Again, we are made to, to move and to, to walk around and do other activities. We're not made to always be static. And if you are like this, it's going to change the actual angles of the way that your lower part and your upper part of your arm are interacting. So instead of them being able to move in the ways they want to, they end up being stuck like this. And especially over time, that's going to start to change potentially even the structure of the arm. So what this is doing is helping to keep that flexibility all the way through the, uh, the elbow and through the wrist at the same time uh, for the whole of the arm. Again, if you have any questions, you can always send me a WhatsApp at 84389550. You can email help at vitalitychiropracticcenters.com. Or of course, you can comment below this video and I'll, be make, and I'll make sure that I get back to you as soon as possible. Late this afternoon, I'm also going to be doing another video to answer another one of our patients, where I'm going to be going through some ways that we can help to prevent migraines at home and help to improve sleep quality. Okay, have a good afternoon, everybody. Enjoy your lunch.